Hello, and welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Ghislaine. I'm Dr. Christine Ghislaine, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the different areas that are assessed during a neuropsychological evaluation. The first part of testing is not necessarily a discrete domain of functioning, but it's something that parents are very interested in when they come in for a neuropsychological evaluation with their child. Specifically, what I'm talking about is intelligence testing. So one of the prominent questions that parents ask is, are you going to give my child an IQ test? Will you tell me my child's IQ? While this is not a discrete domain, it's something that I think is really important to talk about because intelligence testing is certainly something that has gone on for many, many, many decades. And it's important to talk a little bit about those components of the neuropsychological evaluation that come together to form that IQ test or that IQ number. As I mentioned previously, IQ testing has been around for many years. So while I won't bore you with a long history of intelligence testing and how it dated back to the early 1920s and there were multiple theories on it, two-factor models, models of multiple intelligences, and you know, lots of different ways that people sort of conceptualized IQ and intellectual functioning in general. Um, an IQ number is sort of a universal language with which school systems and neuropsychologists and general psychologists can sort of talk about or get a frame of reference for an individual. In a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about it in the context of child intelligence, so IQ testing for children. Adults aren't necessarily given a full IQ test. There are ways of estimating intelligence based on years of schooling and background history information uh, that is more frequently used for adults in a neuropsychological evaluation. That said, we certainly have IQ measures for adults. I know in my practice we give a full IQ test for adults as well. So while I'll talk today about intelligence testing broadly, there are lots of separate mini tests within an IQ test that come together to give us that final IQ number. I will talk about those different mini types of tests as we go through the rest of the domains of functioning. So some things to know about IQ testing. IQ is generally stable over time, unless you have something like a traumatic brain injury or a significant neurological illness. If your IQ is 100 at age 11, it's likely to be around 100 when you're in your 20s, 30s, and so on. So IQ is generally stable over time. Something else that is important to take into consideration, particularly when we're talking about child intelligence testing, is that there are a lot of factors that go into that IQ score that can't be measured by a test. And so it's important when we think about the scores to keep it in the context of one's individual culture, their language. So for example, if they were raised speaking multiple languages, if English is not their native language. These are things that we certainly take into consideration because they will impact that final IQ score. Another thing that certainly will impact IQ scores is motivation and engagement with the task. Particularly in younger years, it's challenging to understand the underlying rationale for why we would need to give our best for all of these tests, and certainly those will be things that are taken into consideration in the evaluation. Well, I've talked a lot about neuropsychological evaluations, including that component of an IQ test or an intelligence quotient test. I want to also talk about the fact that this is one very small piece of a very large puzzle for a neuropsychological evaluation. I will share with you a personal bias, and I you know, don't certainly speak for every neuropsychologist when I say this, but for me, when I look at the IQ scores um, and the subscores that make up that larger IQ number, the pieces of it are way more important than the sum of its parts. So I'm looking at discrete domains of functioning within the IQ test and that's really giving me a better understanding of the child. Also, other areas that I might want to look at in the evaluation or compare scores across in the evaluation. So I want to emphasize to parents or folks who are watching this, an IQ score gives us some information, but I would say some information, not necessarily all information. What's great about a neuropsychological evaluation is we go significantly above and beyond that. An IQ test is a component, but how are we doing in all of these other domains of functioning, which I'm going to talk to you about today. 